Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, it's, uh, it's me, and I feel like I haven't, um, I haven't uh, recorded much in, in a long time. That's, uh, you know, uh, there's so much going on, as I'm sure there is with, with so many of us. It's... Anyway, let's get right to it. Um, I recorded an intro the other day, but uh, I must have been off because it was just um, bad. <laughs> it's just bad. So I'm starting, I'm doing a new one. And in that intro, this piece was not, as you saw in the beginning, those pictures, was not resined, and it is now. And it came out perfect. There is not one drop of resin on the sides or underneath. No resin uh, landed anywhere except where I wanted it to be, which was on the top. It's curing now. Um, I covered it. The sides that you see here, I will eventually um, sand once it's fully cured. So it's still a tiny bit soft, but it's out of any danger of getting any marks or anything like that. Um, I'm going to show you in this video coming up how I cut this piece of poster board how I um, measured and cut it and fit it because I didn't want any sag. And I was a little nervous about doing an oval piece with resin because, you know, the sides, you know, you can see just even how it's taped that it's sort of, um, you know, um, it's not smooth. So I was afraid that there would be like a crevice or something that the resin would slip through. I wanted to make sure that it didn't. So I'm going to show you how I did, I did it the same way as I did, uh, you know, other pieces, such as this one. I just finished this one. The resin is getting nice and hard. I'm going to probably sand it tomorrow. There is no resin anywhere except where I want it to be. I did not tape the sides when I poured it, so the paint is there. Um, and that's fine. I'll probably, I won't worry about it because I'm going to frame this, but... Um, uh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just paint it one color, but it doesn't matter. It came out great. And uh, there wasn't any resin again, except for, except on the substrate where I wanted it to be. So I'm going to show you what, what you'll need, what I, what I, my, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my supplies. I have like some kind of allergies or something. It's driving me crazy. So if I keep clearing my throat, I apologize <clears throat> as I just did. Here's what you're going to need. Okay. For resin. You got to have this, try not to not, you, oh please, unless you're like someplace where there's so much, but even then, I, I just, you know, I'll have the windows open and I still have this on. It's so important. I don't want to damage my lungs or anything internal. So this, this is so important. It's a respirator, okay? I have measuring cups. Now, this is an 11 by 14 length and width, the oval. Um, and it called for five ounces. I poured six because, I, again, I wasn't sure if anything, regardless of how she, one side of my brain was sure, the other side had a, you know, a little bit of doubt. I did six ounces just in case anything slipped through. Um, so I did three hardener, three resiner in this resin, in this um, measuring cup. You can get these anywhere. Anyway, go to Walmart, go to Amazon, get them wherever this cheapest. I'm not making any money on this, so uh, get it, get it wherever you can. They're, they're, you know, they're just measuring cups. You know, that's all. Um, uh, the resin I use, which is art resin, and again, I'm not getting paid, but I like art resin a lot because I tried other resins and they seem to have yellowed fast, and I haven't had that problem with art resin as of pieces that I've done as of even a few years ago. So um, that's what I use. And I measure it by volume, not by weight. And in the, I was in the beginning when I was new, uh, I used to take a scale out and do it that way. That's not how it's done. It's three ounces, three ounces of each, put them together, stir for at least three minutes until it's clear. You're going to have some bubbles. They can, you know, they can come out. I don't warm my resin. Um, I don't warm it because it, um, they say that when you warm it, it, you're already starting the curing process. And, you know, I want my window open as long as I can. 
so I don't bother. The, the, the bubbles come out as long as you're not stirring, you know, like, like a maniac. What's that? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so you just take your time, you, you know, your stick, you make sure that you, you're swiping your stick, you know, um, you're stirring, you get all the corners of the cup. And when I'm done pouring, I don't scrape out the sides of the cup or the bottom to get every last bit, which is another reason why, I keep, you know, I'll, I'll keep an extra ounce in there. So like I said, instead of five, I'll do six. So that um, in case there happens to be a little bit that um, is unstirred, you know, in the corner of the cup or something, I don't want to ruin, I don't want to take a chance on compromising the piece. So I pour and I throw it out. The other thing that I use is, um, I have two kinds of tape here. This is frog tape. I love it, love it. I swear by it. That's just me. But this blue tape I use to reinforce the top that, that you see this lip right here. You see how this comes up. There's, this is not a dome effect. So there's a, like a, like, um, you know, you can see it actually right there. So there's, um, a, like a ledge, I guess you could say, you know, it's, you know, um, so what I do is when I put the frog tape around it, it's thinner. So I take this tape, which is thicker and I go around the top, you know, I go around that top, which you're going to see me do <clears throat> because, um, it's stronger. So it keeps it smoother. This, this will ribbon a little bit. And then by putting this and having it stick to the blue, it, it keeps it, reinforces it. <clears throat> it's like a wall, you know, in a sense. Of course, a torch, okay? Um, be careful, I have a, and I'm, I'm just gonna say it every time because it's important, I have a fire extinguisher nearby because accidents happen. And, um, and spending the extra money to buy, you know, protective equipment is better than burning your house down. <laughs> Uh, it's not funny. Uh, it's true and protecting your health. So do everything you can take every all the measures they um, they recommend and as uh, Some that I'm mentioning here there, there might even be more so make sure you're covered gloves apron eyewear um, I wear you know, I wear glasses like these are um, these are actually reading glasses, but I, they're pretty big and I use them and they help me spot anything that's on the surface also because I'm nearsighted and I wear contacts. So these help me get close to see, get close down to the piece so I can see if there's anything in there that I need to pick out. Um, and then, you know, I have sander. I have a mouse sander, um, but you can do it by hand. And once the piece is fully hardened, uh, you want to just gently, very gently, whether you use your sander or your hand, take your time. Don't rush it. You, uh, it's happened. I've done it where I slip. Whoops. And now there's a scratch in my piece. So I am super, super careful. Um, and I'm trying to think, is there anything else I'm forgetting? I guess that's it. So um, anyway, guys, I just, you know, um, <clears throat> It came out. It came out really great. There's not one speck of resin anywhere except where I want it to be, and that's what you want. And it gives your pieces. If you can work with it, and it doesn't bother you, and you take all the necessary steps, it will give your piece amazing, um, amazing depth, amazing depth. Especially in this one. This one, when it was done, I was like, whoa, you know. Um, and I can't wait to sand it and put it in a frame. Um, as, as well as this one too. Okay, so that's let's get to it. Here we go. We're going to get up to the uh, to the meat of this whole matter, and uh, I'm going to try to time stamp this video. I've never done that before, and but I'm going to try. And um, if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but I want to get this out there as soon as possible. And uh, thank you for joining me. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please please consider doing it. Um, I'm going to keep making the videos. Um, you know, it's not going to deter me, but I'd love to have you on board. Okay. Be right back. Here we go. Let's get started. Okay. So we're going to begin, uh, with the poster board and I'm going to show you, um, <clears throat> you know, measuring it with some measuring tape and, uh, just to make sure that my, um, 
you know, what the measurements are inside, mainly inside. I know that this is an 11 by 14, so there I am tracing it. And the frame around the canvas is about three quarters, it's about three quarters of an inch all around, of course. And so what I did is, it didn't really take that long. I, at first I was dreading, oh God, I have to go around this whole thing, but it went fast. And I just went around, I used my measuring tape and I went around the whole thing. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm cutting uh, what's basically would be the inside of the oval with a uh, box cutter knife. Uh, we actually use it to open boxes with, <laughs> uh, ergo, box cutter knife. And um, so I'm going a, a, you know, a bit superficial, and then once I get the, the lines all around, I then go deeper into it so that I can you know, then pop it out. And that's what I'm doing here. And eventually what I'll do with this is I'll probably, I mean, I know, uh, obviously I'll be trimming it because it's so rare that it fits in the first time. Um, but it didn't take a lot. It was surprisingly, it went very well. So, um, you know, I just trimmed. And what I found was um, kind of preventing it from really going in was this extra, extra canvas that was, you know, the linen, I guess you could call it, that was uh, around the frame of the canvas. So I cut it off because it was just really getting in my way. And uh, so that's what I need the scissors for as well is to get rid of that uh, extraneous um, part of the canvas. And so I went, around, I went around the whole thing, took it off, and it did make life a lot easier to get to uh, place this piece of poster board inside. Of course, the reason being, when I apply the resin, I don't want the center to droop, and this reinforces it. And it went perfect. It really gave it the exact amount of support that it needed. I'm just trimming it down a little bit here because uh, it just was a little bit, uh, it needed it. You know, I just needed it to get it in there and nice and fit. Um, and uh, it, it was, uh, it, worked, it worked out great. No complaints about that process at all. Okay, so it's nice and tight. It's, uh, you know, very, very firm, very, um, very supportive of the canvas. Now, watch what I'm doing here with this tape. I'm leaving a little bit of probably, probably less than a quarter of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. I, I don't know. I really just kind of eyeball it. And I'm leaving a little bit extra at the top, and I'm going around. I'm trying to keep it uniform around the entire canvas. Working with the oval shape, made, now there was a good shot of it, how it kind of, it comes you know, it just um, extends a little bit past the top of the canvas. And that's the barrier so that when I go to pour the resin, uh, it's there to act as to stop it from running over the edge. The, the thing about fro and the rest of the tape that's not, uh, you know, that doesn't go over the top, you can see I'm folding under the canvas frame. And I was a little concerned at first because, you know, with an oval-shaped canvas, I was unsure, as you heard me express in the beginning, that uh, I, you know, could totally prevent the resin from seeping through. But I was, I've been pretty successful, very successful with this method, so I'm sticking with it. And, uh, and it, it worked out great. So I'm going around. Now I'm done. I'm going to cut, cut it. And, um, and I'm trying to pull it as much as I can. But see, frog tape, although it's sticky and it does a great job, is thin. And so that top barrier, if you will, the, you know, the, the, the part that overlaps, is not strong. And it's almost ribbony, so that if, the, if I pour the resin only the, on this, this way, it, it's rather weak, and it really wouldn't do the best job. So what I do is two things. I take another piece of, I take more frog tape and I go to right up to the edge where you see of the, can, of the canvas, right up to the, um, not where 
yeah, right there where you see, just right up to the end of it. And then I fold it over, fold it under again. So now I have my barrier and now I have further um, support this way. So I'm, I'm pressing hard and I'm pulling it over and around and under. So this is really the third, uh, I guess, taping, the, the third time that I've taped this piece to try to keep the resin off the canvas and to try to keep the resin on, um, you know, only on what the part of the canvas that I want, which is, of course, the top, not the sides. I don't want a dome effect. I want it only to say, to stay, I'm sorry, on the top of the canvas. So I've laid it down and now I have, um, uh, I'm pulling up the tape that's, you know, that from laying it down that's stuck to the canvas, which is no big deal, it comes right up. And, but, but this tape is weak when it comes to uh, any kind of barrier. So what I decided is what I did with one of my other pieces, and that is I took out the blue carpenter tape, which is, it's, it's thicker. It's, um, um, it gave it uh, more, it's going to give it more strength. It's going to make that, that barrier um, smoother so that the resin won't have that ripply effect. Now you can see it happening here as you watch. So I'm going all around it right up to the edge of the barrier and I'm pushing the green tape against the blue tape so that I have a nice, smooth, strong barrier so that the resin stays put and doesn't uh, go over it. So the resin won't go over it, but will, it will also keep a um, smooth shape. In other words, it won't have that ribbony effect that you see, you know, with the frog tape. It straightens it out. It smooths it out. It will have a nice um, straight, you know, all around finish, um, the sides, that is. Uh, so I do that. I, do, I take pieces of it and I just go all around the entire canvas that way. I don't try to use one continuous, um, you know, piece of tape. I, I use several pieces and really, uh, really um, push it in and, and make sure that the frog tape is very secure against that blue tape. And um, it, it really, uh, it makes a huge difference. It really, really does, as you can see, just by looking at it. So I'm just going around the entire canvas and I'm um, pushing the tape, making sure that the frog tape is sticking to the blue tape. And, and then I'm pushing it uh, even more, going around the whole canvas, making sure that it's really sticking because I, I really don't want anything to come through there. Okay, so after that we commence with the uh, applying the resin, putting the resin on top. So <clears throat> here I have some yogurt cups and I turn them over and I put them underneath the, the uh, canvas. I pushed them uh, past the frame so that they were sitting directly on the cardboard because I really wanted a nice flat shape and I used my leveler just to make sure. Now there's my measuring cups. I'm going to be uh, mixing up six ounces of resin. So I'm going to be pouring three and three to make six. Three hardener, three resin, uh, stirring for at least three minutes, slowly, carefully wiping my stick. I start out with a silicone stick and then I, I take out a, a wooden stick and I, I stir it some more. There's my respirator, uh, putting that on, uh, sped this up, but of course I'm not going that fast. Scraping the sides constantly, scraping the stick constantly, 
uh, going just just going nice, slow and steady. So I'm finished. I, you know, I obviously you didn't watch the whole thing. Why should you, right? Um, so I'm pouring it on. I have my gloves on. Normally I have two sets of gloves, one that I spread the resin around with, and then when I'm done with that, I take off the uh, the outer layer, the, the outer set of gloves, so that the the you know of course the the, the gloves underneath are you know nice and clean and then I uh, torch it and um, make sure that it, the resin is up against the sides make sure that it's covering the camera so that there's no spots I'm torching it torching it a few times and I'm checking it over very carefully I have my respirator on and I have my glasses on and I'm I have a light over it and I'm really looking for pieces of lint, pieces of dust. There you see me taking off those gloves and uh, torching it some more. And you kind of have to babysit this a little bit uh, if, you, if you really want it to come out really, really well. You, you know, you just make sure that you stay on top of it. Once I'm satisfied that I've removed any lint or anything that could have got into it, I cover it and uh, and then uh, hope for the best. Okay, so we're here, we're going to, um, this is the piece that I did yesterday. Um, you can see how beautiful it came out. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm taking the tape off so that you can see how none of the resin came through. Um, I had it set on these. So I'm going to set this down so you can see. So here we begin taking off all the tape and um, you know you just take it off <laughs> basically. You know you take it off the way it comes off and uh, there's no mystery or secret behind this. And uh, you know, I tried to, you know, uh, start with the outer and work my way in, but uh, it doesn't always come off as neat as that. I try to kind of pull in a, a motion towards me so that I don't uh, get little pieces of tape stuck in there. Uh, but sometimes you can't really help it. Uh, but it's no big deal. It comes right off. And um, this part is no mystery. Uh, I, I uh, mainly, you know kept this in so that you could see firsthand how perfect this came out, how none of the resin escaped through all that tape. Uh, you know, it just worked like a charm, really. It just worked so perfectly. And the cardboard underneath uh, gave it a nice level finish. Uh, I wish I had taped the sides when I did pour this, but going forward, I think I might do that. But once you see this and you see after all the tape comes off, you'll see that there is not a drop of resin anywhere except for where I want it to be, as I said in the beginning. And um, so taking that extra measure, guys, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, taking that extra measure and, you know, just just really reinforcing it with with the tape may make such a huge difference in the outcome um, you know your your input equals your your outcome basically so I mean there's no mystery here um, so anyway we're getting near the end and then you're gonna you know you'll see um, I got up early this morning to do this so that you could see it and um, as I said, I, I can't be more pleased with this. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, being a part of this. And have a really great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.